Politics was slow to take technology seriously. Over the past two decades, MPs and political parties have mostly looked on the internet with suspicion, but now see it as a serious political tool. Back in 1992, when John Major beat Neil Kinnock to Downing Street, the World Wide Web was still a research project that few had heard of. But the impact of technology was clear to see on party political broadcasts, with the Conservatives' tax bombshell campaign seen as particularly effective. Even the BBC's Peter Snow embraced the computing age, taking us on a virtual tour of the House of Commons. The 1997 general election then was the first of the internet age, and political parties experimented with their first websites. The Labour Party site had a section for women, while the Conservative Party had a guide for the young and an interactive game of Spot the Ball. On his party's website, Lib Dem leader Paddy Ashdown heralded the internet as the future of communications and information. Party election broadcasts were slicker than ever, with the Labour Party casting Peter Postlethwaite as a reassuring taxi driver. BBC.co.uk wouldn't launch until December, but the broadcaster experimented with a 1997 election microsite and later a Politics 97 hub. By the 2001 general election, there were nearly 30 million websites. On the BBC, David Dimbleby was dwarfed by a vast set, and for the first time, parties were vying for control of the 10 Downing Street website. Sites such as The Guardian and The Electronic Telegraph also reported on the general election online for the first time. The BBC also had a more recognisably modern website. Wikipedia launched this year, but the likes of Facebook and Twitter wouldn't exist for ages, proving again that the internet was still very much in its infancy. Computer-generated graphics weren't, however. Here's Peter Snow being attacked by a giant swingometer. 2005, Labour wins again, and political parties look decidedly modern online. With more than 1 billion websites, the internet is definitely alive and kicking. In the UK, broadband overtook dial-up internet for the first time, and websites spruced themselves up accordingly. Some tech-savvy MPs even had their own, with Labour MP Tom Watson one of the first. YouTube launched this year, although its homepage at the time was somewhat basic. The BBC's website, by comparison, now had an interactive map and a section dedicated to election videos. ITV's election night coverage opened with a shot of a computer-powered engine room, while Peter Snow was now trapped inside a massive Nintendo 64 game. 2010 was the first social general election. Political parties took to Facebook, Twitter and YouTube with mixed results. Here's Nick Clegg vlogging from a plane, which got a couple of thousand views, and even Gordon Brown got social, taking to YouTube to shake hands with people in car parks. The BBC sets became even more elaborate, with Jeremy Vine strutting down a virtual Downing Street to explain how the night's drama would unfold. Facebook's Democracy UK page hosted online mock elections and videos from party leaders, but was recently abandoned and taken over by someone with a clear dislike for the Conservative Party. Wired pointed the problem out to Facebook, and the social network has since reclaimed it. The 2015 general election will, unsurprisingly, make even more online noise than ever before.